house. I'm 39 years old. I'm a professional fisherman from Virginia Beach, Virginia, and I'm going to tell you the story about the day where I was a millionaire. I grew up fishing. I, I fished when I was a kid. Um, I've always worked in fishing. I always, when I was a little kid, I hung around the marinas and I worked my way into working as a mate on a boat. I worked in commercial fishing and eventually I bought my own boat and I opened a charter fishing company and I spent 15 years charter fishing uh, before I started working on the underdog. In 2017, I was approached by one of my regular charters and friends who wanted to purchase a vessel and turn that vessel into a tournament fishing boat with the goal of fishing in fishing tournaments, being competitive in fishing tournaments. The underdog is a 57 foot island boat works. First major tournament of the year, or first major billfish tournament of the year, I should say, would be the Big Fish Classic, which is an overnight fishing tournament out of Ocean City, Maryland. We had really good fishing in that tournament. We caught a couple out of a quad of blue marlin, which is pretty cool, on plugs. Uh, to have four, we actually had five blue marlin behind the boat. We hooked four of them. I think we caught two of them. We caught a couple of white marlin on the plugs. We caught a spearfish on the plug uh, to round out a, a grand slam. And we also, we came in third place in that tournament when we weighed a 354 pound blue marlin. Um, my boss got to catch that fish. It was a beautiful plug bite. Uh, it was towards the end of our fishing day. That, that worked out perfect that, that day. Uh, there was two other boats that came in with blue marlin and their blue marlins were a little bit bigger than ours. I mean, we, we accomplished our mission. We caught a grand slam in a tournament. We had a quad blue marlin hookup. We weighed a blue marlin in a tournament. That's, that's as good as you could start your season with billfish tournaments for the 2018 season for us. Coming off of the Big Fish Classic, our next tournament was going to be the White Marlin Open. The White Marlin Open, that's the, the World Series, the Super Bowl, the Stanley Cup, that's the biggest of the big that comes to sport fishing. Uh, the 2018 White Marlin Open there was over $5 million on the line. In the White Marlin Open, you win the most money by catching the biggest White Marlin and being entered in all of the Calcuttas for that. Our 2018 tournament team for the White Marlin Open was a bunch of my regulars that I fish with, my friends. I met with everybody a couple of days before the tournament. We discussed everything talked back and forth through messages about what was going to go on. Greg Giron, a lot of people call me Snoop. I'm a fisherman from Virginia Beach, Virginia. I got introduced to fishing at a young age. My grandma introduced me to saltwater fishing. I was maybe around four. As I became a teenager, I kind of started going down the wrong path. That path landed me in a couple juvenile facilities and later on in prison. Upon my release, I still struggled to stay on the right path. A friend of mine reintroduced me to fishing, and it's safe to say that fishing has saved my life. I started fishing tournaments with a friend of mine, Jake Howes, and the Underdog crew, and we've tackled multiple tournaments, sometimes winning, sometimes not. You know, I don't, I don't do it for the money. I just, I, I do it for the competition. I enjoy it. The first day was just a, the first day of tournament fishing was, was just mediocre for us. We kind of got into the swing of things. We fished south of the Norfolk Canyon. We caught two out of, I think, five white marlin that we saw. One of those fish was going to be a bigger fish, but we never really had a bite out of him. After that day of fishing, uh, we just kind of hung around, got our tackle at 100%, you know, had everything dialed in. We were fishing out of Virginia Beach, out of the fishing center for the tournament. And at Fisherman's Wharf Marina on Tuesday night, they had a little get together with all of the boats that were fishing. And at that get together, 
I spoke to the crew of the Welder's Ark. Everybody there is friends and no big deal. There's a bunch of fishermen talking. But one of the things that I took away from that get together at Fisherman's Wharf was the crew of the Welder's Ark told us where we could find some tinker mackerel. And I very much prefer fishing with tinker mackerel for white marl. I'm able to kind of grade through the smaller fish and target bigger white marlin with tinker mackerel. And the crew of the Welder's Ark were kind enough to give me exact numbers of where I could find tinker mackerel. We put together a group on our lay day. We went out to the canyon and we caught tinker mackerel. The tinker mackerel were right where he said they would be. There were some boats that were fishing in the tournament in the same area where the tinker mackerel were and they were catching white marlin. I even caught a white marlin on a tinker mackerel on a sabiki rig while we were bringing up bait. Our second fishing day of the tournament was going to be Thursday, which would be the fourth day of the tournament. Going into day four of the white marlin open, the leader was a 70 something pound fish. The underdog went to the same spot where we caught the tinker mackerel the day before. And we deployed a spread of dead tinker mackerel. Since using live tinker mackerel in a tournament is against the rules, we slow trolled dead tinker mackerel. Like I said, that's a very effective way to fish for the bigger white marlin. The reason the white marlin are in that area isn't because there's ballyhoo there. The white marlin are there because there's tinker mackerel there. And the bigger fish are eating tinker mackerel. We went out and at lines in, we almost immediately had a hookup. The mate hooked the fish, the mate caught that fish, and we boated that fish pretty quickly in about five minutes. That fish ended up being a nice fish. We put the spread back in the water. And we trolled around for a few minutes. We hooked another fish. That fish came off. After another hour or so, we hooked another fish. That fish jumped off 10.30 in the morning. We had a decent fish come in. I passed it down. We proceeded to fight that fish. Fish on, baby. Oh yeah, he's dancing. He's dancing, he's dancing. Don't get the snow pump when you catch your quick. While I was fighting that fish, the fish that we were fighting raised another fish. I was being very careful to quickly catch the fish that we had on the line without spooking the fish that we had raised because the fish that we had raised was a considerably larger fish. We caught the fish, we released it, I called in the release, I didn't drop the dredges back in the water, I didn't drop the teasers back into the water, I dropped one bait into the water and I pulled that bait over top of the fish that we had raised. And it it was perfect. Fish fired right in on it. I dropped back and when I came tight with it, that fish jumped 15 feet in the air. I'm in the 
world's biggest fishing tournament and I just hooked a fish that I believe is probably 10 or 15 pounds bigger than the fish that's sitting in first place. And this is the fourth day of a five day tournament. I passed the rod down to Snoop. Finally hooked up to a large white marlin. Little did I know what kind of fight this was going to be. Marlon took me to the left of the boat. He took me to the right of the boat. He took me to the middle of the boat. I'm talking waves coming in on both corners. I'm talking flies biting down my ankles. Now when you fish a tournament like this, nobody can touch you. Nobody can help you. Nobody can grab you. No, you can't pass the rod to anybody, so it's all on you. From the minute that we hooked this thing, we knew thing something was wrong. I knew that the fish was wrapped. It's gonna be a little while. Uh, we gonna see. We gonna see him unless he wraps that line and freeze it off. This wasn't gonna be no five minute, ten minute marlin fight. This was one of the hardest fights I've ever had in my life. This was physically demanding. I fought this fish for two hours and 50 minutes. When we fish for white marlin, we only use 80 pound fluorocarbon for our leader. I've got a fish that I know is gonna be a, a big fish, and I know that it's gonna be a contender for leading the tournament. And I also know that I have the fish wrapped up on light tackle. It's not a very good situation to be in because uh, with the fish being wrapped, the line can actually cut itself pretty easily. Um, if it hits itself or anything like that, if it's in a way that the fish can pull the line against itself, the line can break. An 80 pound test for billfish isn't very strong. I mean, that's, that's what I would call light tackle. If you don't use enough drag, the fight can drag on forever and the line will just eventually chafe and it'll break off. So. You've got to, when you have a fish that's wrapped up, it's kind of a catch-22. You, you, you can't do too much drag because you'll break the line, and you can't do too little drag because you'll eventually chafe the fish off. So you've got to find a happy medium. Just doing that in itself took over an hour. We finally did get control of the fish. The fish stayed deep, and it was a, it was a grueling fight. I got, the, I got the fish to the boat about seven times. On the eighth time, we made the call to gaff this fish. And we gaff this fish because that's what any smart person would do. When you got a fish like this with the leader wrapped around him, this leader is frayed. You try to leader this fish or grab him by the bill, you have a chance of losing him. With that situation, we had to be extremely careful when the fish got to the boat. That sucks too. <laughs> I knew it was a big fish. I knew it was a contender for the tournament. And we had been fighting this fish for two hours and 40 minutes with the line clearly wrapped around the fish. It could have broke at any second. Um, I think that we had the fish within range to where we could take the fish maybe seven or eight times before we did actually take the fish just because I wanted to be extremely careful. I didn't want anybody to get over anxious with it. I didn't want my angler to see the fish and get excited and pull and snap the line. I didn't want my mate to grab the leader 
and try and pull the fish and snap the line, I wanted to very gently get the fish pulled to the back of the boat and then I know that this fish is going to be a contender. We're going to gaff it. I don't want to leader this fish and break it off and lose it after two hours and 40 minutes. I want the angler to crank the fish all the way up into gaffing range without the mate leadering it. And we went through that for a solid half hour of where the fish would get beside the boat and get close to being in range as to where we could gaff it and then it would take off 20 or 30 yards and then we'd have to work to get that 20 or 30 yards back. This isn't like normal white marlin where it takes, takes off 20 or 30 yards and that 20 or 30 yards is on the surface. This fish would take off 20 or 30 yards and it would go straight down 100 feet and then we'd have to very slowly pull it up sideways again. The seventh or eighth time that we did that fish got in range and I told the mate, gaff the fish, no leadering, it was my call, I told him to gaff it and I would do it again. We gaffed the fish, we brought it on the boat and keep in mind that we already have one fish that is close to a contender, close to a qualifier, laying on the deck of the boat. We threw this fish into the boat and it was clearly a much larger fish than the fish that we had on deck. We measured the fish and the fish had a 30 inch girth, which for white marlins, if you want to win the white marlin open, your fish had better have a 30 inch girth. That's what wins it every year. We measured that thing and I saw 30 inches on the girth. It was time to go to Ocean City. We threw all the stuff into the boat. Everybody high fives and hugs. And it was a pretty great feeling. We had two fish on deck that met the minimum qualifications for weighing. And one of those fish, in my mind, I knew was going to be the new first place fish in the White Marlin Open at the end of the fourth of a five day fishing tournament. And uh, we went to Ocean City. I was very anxious the whole way back to Ocean City. You fish your whole life and that two hour ride from the Norfolk Canyon to Ocean City was probably the longest two hours of my life. It was just a million different things to think about. We get in there to the dock and the way in at Harbor Island they knew that we had two fish on deck and they knew that one of them was a big one. We get there and there's thousands of people standing there waiting to see what we have in the boat. It's online, it's on TV, it's, I mean, it's a big deal. I fill out the paperwork and talk to the waymaster and we, we weighed the, we weighed the first fish we caught first. This fish was caught by Brandon Bartlett out of Yorktown, Virginia. 65 pounds leads the tournament. Woo! 65 and a half pounds. 65 and a half. And it didn't, it was just under the minimum qualifying weight for a white marlin in the white marlin open. In order to qualify in the white marlin open, a white marlin must be 70 pounds and our fish was just under 70 pounds, which is fine because we know that we've got a much bigger fish waiting to weigh. It was almost a qualifier. The fish that I had on deck was much bigger and it was going to be the new first place fish. So we strung that fish up, the second fish, and when they weighed it, I couldn't see from where we were standing, I couldn't see the numbers of what my fish weighed, but I could tell that it was the new first place fish because as soon as they hung it in the air, there were thousands of people just went freaking crazy.
Now, I knew that the White Marlin Open was big, but I didn't know how big it was until we were in first place looking at $2.6 million. I'm getting calls from people that don't know anything about fishing, don't care about fishing, don't, never even heard of the White Marlin Open. They're calling me like, you're on the news, you're in the newspaper. And this is in different states. This is in Maryland, this is in Virginia. You, I mean, we're all over the internet. This is crazy. We were treated like rock stars. Thank you on, on the underdog from Virginia Beach. We're actually hooked up on another Marlin, when, uh, a release Marlin, um, when we saw the other one, and it just kind of, how things happen so fast, man, and it was like the way he was hooked, you know, it kind of, because it, it kind of got last on around us, so it took a while to get him in, man, he fought him for probably like two hours, 45 minutes, so, yeah, it's, it was, it was rough, man, but it was worth it, man, it was awesome, man, these guys right here, are, I'm telling you, man, no, you can't, you can't do it by yourself, you know what I mean, I couldn't do it without these guys, so. So you, you go into the tournament hoping that's what will happen, but you don't expect it because then you set yourself up sometimes. You're just going there to have fun, man. So when something like this happens, it's like, holy crap, you know? The moment where the Waymaster told me that I had the new first place White Marlin was the greatest moment of my professional career. I mean, being a professional fisherman, that's something that you dream about. And it was amazing. It was awesome. We celebrated. That was <laughs> that, that was awesome. When we weighed that fish in, the crowd's going wild and everything. And I'm just like on cloud nine. And we filled out we, we took our pictures with it, went and hugged and kissed our women and jumped back on the boat and it really didn't didn't even hit me until we were coming down the creek and my Facebook's blowing up. I've got hundreds of people text messaging me. My phone's just ringing off the hook. Everybody congratulating me. People waving at us, yelling at us when we're coming down the creek there, coming out of Harbor Point. It was, just, it, it was amazing. It was awesome. I looked at the White Marlin Open website when they updated it. It had a chart. It showed the standings for the tournament. And it said we were in first place, underdog, with an 83 pound White Marlin that was worth $2.6 million. At that point, with my cut of the winnings at $2.6 million, I would have been looking at coming home with six hundred and sixty thousand dollars, that's that's more money than I've ever had in my life. That uh, that that's life changing. That would that would pay off my house. It'd put my daughter through college. I'd never I'd never have to worry about money again if I had that kind of money. It was an amazing feeling that night. I was tired from fishing. I remember we tied up at the marina, at White Marlin Marina in Ocean City. Everybody was coming down to the boat. Everybody was partying, and having a good time and drinking. I just, I wanted to get something to eat and just kind of take the night in. Everybody stayed on the boat that night and I stayed at me and me and my wife stayed at, uh, at a friend's house in Ocean City. And I remember that night I couldn't, I had to fish the next day and I was tired from fishing on Thursday, but I couldn't sleep. I just kind of laid in bed thinking about it all night. I even saw myself on the 11 o'clock news in Ocean City and I thought that was pretty cool. Um, it was a, it was an awesome experience. Like it was, it was, it, it was the best. Like I, like I remember it in my head, like, like it, like it's a movie playing back when I think about it.
Um, and I, I got up the next morning. The boat was in Ocean City. We stayed in Ocean City for the night to go fishing. And then we were gonna come home to Virginia Beach the next day, unless we had something else to weigh. Now, we're sitting in first place in the white ball and open, looking at $2.6 million. But there's still one day of fishing left. You got the best fishermen in the world that fish this tournament. Um, but we went, we left out of Ocean City there, and we ran right back to where we caught our fish the day before. It was a real pretty day. I wouldn't call it very good fishing for us anyways. We saw a couple of fish, but we couldn't get anything to commit. I did see a gigantic fish that I didn't get a bite out of, that I would have called probably a 100 plus pound white marlin. I didn't get a bite out of him. Um, but that happens. Midday during the fifth day of the tournament, the welder's arc boat, the boat that had put us on the tinker mackerel on Wednesday, called me on the Virginia Beach channel on the VHF radio and told me he had boated a fish. And his fish, he had hand scaled at 67 pounds. And I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I didn't think that that was a threat to my fish that I had in first place. And then not even 20 minutes later, he called me on the radio and said that he had just boated another fish. And that fish was gonna be a close one with the fish that I had in first place. He said that he hand scaled it at 80 pounds. And I was concerned could cut the tension with a knife it was so thick everybody was on pins and needles i tried to actually just sleep the whole day away but you can't you can't sleep with this much on the line so on friday on the final day of the tournament the welder's arc had uh, had boated two fish and i knew that they were good fish um, I was, I was pretty worried about it. On the ride home from the Norfolk Canyon back to the fishing center in Virginia Beach, it was a two hour ride. I remember it was slick, flat, calm that day. And I was running like 35 knots to get home because I wanted to get home before everybody else got in so that I could watch the weigh in from my phone. It was pins and needles. It was like kind of the same feeling as when I was going to Ocean City with two fish on the deck, except for it was the opposite. I was worried that that somebody had bigger fish than me. It's a, it's a great feeling having a first place fish in a tournament, but it's a really terrible feeling knowing that somebody else could potentially beat you <laughs> now we finally pull into the dock get back to get back to cell phone service and everybody's on their phone looking at the live feed from the white marlin open when we got in to virginia beach um we didn't really do anything we didn't clean the boat everybody just kind of sat inside on their phone watching uh, there was a couple of fish that were coming to get weighed in, but really I was just concerned with the with the welder's arc coming in. And we watched a fish or two get weighed that didn't qualify. And then the welder's arc pulled up and he weighed his smaller fish first and then he weighed his bigger fish. And when he hung his bigger fish up, my heart just stopped beating for a minute. I saw that their fish weighed the exact same thing that our fish weighed. We had both caught fish in the same tournament that weighed the exact same thing. And it was a tie. When we heard 
that these guys tied us and wait for biggest white Marlin. It was like, everybody was just kind of froze. We're like, hold on, hold on, hold on. You know, most of the tournaments you fish, it's whoever gets to the scale first would be, would take, is the tiebreaker. Didn't work like that. They have a gaff rule. So if we gaff our fish and they didn't, then they, then they would take first place, we would take second. And that was the case. And that was, I mean, that was just, it was heartbreak. You know, you can't think about, you can't help but think about what you're gonna do with all that money. And the way the rules in the White Marlin Open work is that in the event of a tie, the fish that was not gaffed is deemed the winner. So even though we were tied in weight to win the White Marlin Open, at 83 pounds, we came in second place because we gaffed our fish. The rules are the rules, and it is what it is. But of all the luck on earth to have the same weight. I saw that, and everybody was trying to talk to me. And I just, I remember I just, I got in my car and came home. I sat here on the couch. After I saw the Welder's Ark fish weighed in at 83 pounds and tied our fish, we came in second place. And I just, I didn't, I didn't want to be around anybody. Like I had a lot of people asking me questions and I had a lot of people trying to comfort me my wife was still in Ocean City. She had driven up to come see me weighing my fish. She was still in Ocean City on her way home to Virginia Beach. And I got home and I was just alone for like a couple hours. And I just couldn't stop thinking about it. We went from winning $2.6 million to being tied for first place and with the tiebreaker putting us in second place we went from 2.6 million dollars in winnings to 129 thousand dollars in winnings and it's still great it's 129 thousand dollars but 129 thousand dollars isn't 2.6 million dollars and being tied for first is not being first. It was upsetting. I mean, I, I wouldn't change anything that I did. I did everything the right way for the situation that I had. I wouldn't change that a bit. It was just terrible luck. I woke up Saturday morning. The White Marlin Open called me about doing a polygraph. And I told them that I was in, I was in Virginia Beach. And I was really just upset with the situation and for them to find somebody else on my crew to polygraph. I didn't want to go up there. Our crew went up to Ocean City to the awards banquet for the White Marlin Open, and I stayed home. I went out drinking with my wife and some of my friends. Saturday was kind of surreal. It was like uh, everybody was talking about it. It was on like the news, it was in all the newspapers, it was in magazines. I mean, it's months later now. And when I see people from the fishing community and I talk to them, even months later that now they're like, what the, what in the world with the White Marlin Open? Like, why'd you gaff that fish? You know, everybody, that's, that's their question. Why'd you gaff that fish? I didn't have any choice but to gaff that fish. And it was a great experience and it worked out the way that it did. Not because I gaffed the fish, it was just a run of bad luck. And still to this day, when I think back about it, and somebody all the time I get asked, 
why'd you gaff that fish? I gaffed the fish because I had to, and I wouldn't have changed anything about the way we did anything. Everybody did their job. And it was just unlucky. I, I know it's hard to say winning $130,000 is unlucky. Um, just things could have came out much more differently. $130,000 is still a nice payday. But it, it would be much cooler to have been a millionaire instead of just being a millionaire for a day. So months later now, I've been thinking about this for since August and it's January now. And I, I've had a lot on my chest that I wanted to get off my chest. And I've talked about it on social media. I've had posts on Facebook talking about it that had thousands of comments and people people always put their opinion into it and your opinion of the situation or your opinion of me um, you, you might not know the situation and when I come back to all of this, I, I, I congratulate the crew of the Welders Ark. Um, they won fair and square. They won according to the rules. I would not have changed anything that I did. I regret nothing about what we did. But we, what we accomplished from having a boat that was sitting in a field rotting away to a year later winning or tying to win the world's biggest fishing tournament it's amazing and I, I would take nothing back from it um, There's a couple of things that I would like to see changed. I actually don't have a problem with the gaffing tiebreaker. Most fishing tournaments have a rule that says the first caught fish is the, is the winner, but the White Marlin Open does it differently. That's the White Marlin Open's choice. I have no problem with that. The only thing that I take issue with is that the White Marlin Open weighs fish in half pound increments. And in my opinion, that lends itself to a tie because in the number of years that, have, that they've had this tournament, there's been several ties. And if our fish were weighed to the nearest ounce, or to the nearest tenth of a pound, perhaps the situation would have been different. It would have been, it would have been a tie. Right now, the money kind of stings, but as a fisherman, I've always dreamed of winning the White Marlin Open. And because the fish were weighed in half pound increments, I'll never know whether my fish was the biggest fish in the White Marlin Open in 2018. And I don't have any problem whatsoever with the White Marlin Open. And I look forward to competing in it in the future. And you can mark my words, I'm not going to be tied for number one. I'm going to be number one in the upcoming years. I just if I could have any criticism over anything, it would just be that I would like 
to see the fish scaled in something smaller than half pound increments. That way it doesn't lend itself to having the same situation that occurred between the underdog and the welder's arc in 2018 to occur to other boats in the future. This year was disappointing with that and that situation can be avoided in the future. And I would just like to see that situation avoided in the future. And you guys better watch out for me in 2019 because I'm coming to get you. Thank <laughs> you.